Hello, in this tutorial we revisit Neo Riemannian theory introduced in part 1 from this series and apply elementary and compound transformations to a dominant pedal point chord progression. You'll see alternative paths in the Tonetz diagram and what these mean in terms of Schillinger root cycles. Short orchestral composition examples illustrate these concepts. Neo Riemannian theory and the triad tonets may be used as a practical music composition technique when applying the elementary and compound Riemannian transformations to a dominant pedal point chord progression framework. You'll see this application and the interpretation in terms of Schillinger diatonic and symmetric system root cycles when designing five alternative paths in the tonets diagram and creating instrumental forms for an orchestral setting. This subsection summarizes the essentials from part 1 in the series. The triad tonets has the notes, the chromatic scale pitch classes at the nodal points, the vertices of the triangles containing major and minor triads, such as the triads on root C shown here. Due to periodicity there is redundancy, meaning that you'll see multiple occurrences of any triad. When chord progressions move through the tonets, a narrative value, an emotional response will emerge, a fact that is used in opera, symphonic poems and epic film music. The chord progressions may include the three elementary Riemannian transformations, parallel, relative and leading tone exchange shown here. These involve diatonic root movement and two common notes between triads. The chord type changes from major to minor or the reverse. The chord type does not change when using compound Riemannian transformations, a pairwise combination of the simple P, L and R operations. Now the roots move by either 3 or 4 semitones and the triad combinations are called chromatic medians, since they do not naturally occur in diatonic scales. The two triads share one common note. This tutorial series combines Neo-Riemannian theory with the root cycle concept from the Schillinger system of musical composition in either the diatonic or symmetric harmony system. The Tonetz diagram shows the diatonic root cycles in orange as either positive root cycles R3 and R5 moving to the left into the subdominant direction or as negative root cycles when moving in the opposite direction towards the dominant. Chord progressions involving chromatic medians correspond to the diagonal red arrows that depict symmetric system root movement of 3 or 4 semitones up or down. When writing functional music for film or games you may benefit from the more or less established narrative value that is linked to Riemannian transformations. A reference used in part 1 puts narrative and emotional labels on the four compound transformations. I demonstrated these in the examples from that episode. You may design chord movement paths in the Tonetz diagram and the musical effect will be illustrated with the dominant pedal point chord progression framework. The framework shown here in staff notation is subject of a dedicated chapter on pedal point in the Schillinger Special Theory of Harmony. The key is G major and note the dominant pedal point D in the bass. The harmony is also labeled below the staff. This framework will be used in the Riemannian transformation application and is somewhat modified from the template dominant pedal point progression. We open with an augmented 6th chord on the supertonic degree, the A7 flat 5 in first inversion position. In the middle I've inserted the 4th degree C major chord over D, which is equivalent to the D dominant 9 sus 4 chord. The purpose of this tutorial is to find alternative ways to get from the C to the D triad in the tonets. The Schillinger root cycle labels tell us something about chord progression stability and cadential feeling. G to C is an R5 root movement, since the root leaps down a fifth. C to D is a descending seventh, while we see the familiar dominant to tonic R5 cadential closing. Schillinger allows only a limited set of intermediate triads in a pedal point framework, namely only those that together with the pedal point here, D in the bass, form a valid diatonic chord structure, such as the 7th chord in either root or inverted position. This will be the subject of a future video tutorial. When walking through the tonets I'll take the liberty of locally modifying the bass pedal pitch. 
Listen to the starting point a dominant pedal point chord progression. In the first from the total of five paths, we move from C to D in the tonets by using L and R simple transformations only, which yield negative diatonic road cycles. In the tonets, note the shortest possible path from C to D with a set of simple L and R Riemannian transformations. This path is also marked in the chord progression, shown at the top. From the starting triad C, there is the inverted E-7 chord, followed by three triads. The Schillinger root cycle pattern is a series of diatonic negative R-3 cycles, since the chord roots all are leaping by ascending thirds. The voice leading is mostly smooth and stepwise. The example opens and closes with contrary motion between outer parts. And here is the dominant pedal point chord progression with tonet triads inserted. In order to compose orchestral application examples, we use another Schillinger concept. We map a so-called instrumental form on the basic chord progression. The result is the reduced score shown here, an 8 measures andante phrase in 4-4 time signature. The chords are shown above the string section, with starting and destination tone and stride marked with orange circles. Note the dominant pedal pitch D as staccato note patterns in bassoon and contrabass. The primary element in this setting is the melody, that moves through the string section, and that contains many appoggiaturas to generate added harmonic interest. The secondary elements are the chromatically ascending middle part for French horns, the arpeggio patterns in woodwind and harp, and the triplet trumpet motifs. The second path elaborates on this application concept, elongating the path from C to D in the tonets by using compound Riemannian transformations. This path leads us along the somewhat remote major triad on B-flat. We obtain the extended D-dominant pedal point shown here. The longer path now includes two compound Riemannian transformations, RP and LP. The result is two pairs of chromatic medians, from E minor to G minor, and from B flat major to D major at the end. As you listen to this chord progression, note that still all Schillinger root cycles are negative. Their chromatic medians correspond to the symmetric root cycles R minus 3i and R minus 4i. The second orchestral example is a lively waltz, with the chords shown once again above the strings. The D dominant pedal point is played by bassoon and pizzicato basses in octave leaps. The primary element is the gradually ascending melody for flute, glockenspiel and violins. Here also, for increased harmonic interest, I added a chromatically descending countermelody in clarinet, oboe and French horn. The other secondary element is the set of legato arpeggio patterns in violas and cellos. In path number 3, there is the deliberate addition of a positive root cycle, while increasing the number of compound Riemannian transformations in the progression. As you can see here, we take a considerably longer detour, with 4 compound and 2 simple transformations. On the way we pass through the 4th degree, the subdominant C minor triad, and the remote key of B major. With a given series of chords in the progression, the bass pedal point needs modification. 
moving to the neighboring note D sharp or E flat before the stepwise descending return to D. The four compound transformations are shown above the staff and in the tonettes. This yields a considerable set of chromatic medians. All this was done to obtain at least one positive diatonic root cycle, going from D sharp minor to B major. In the audio example, I've also marked the compound root cycle from B through D to G. That is a positive symmetric system R4I root cycle that strengthens the overall closing cadential feeling. The instrumental form for this path has quite some late romantic period flavor, caused by the high density of remote chords and the use of appoggiaturas. The meter is 9-8. Whereas the previous examples used one chord per measure, now measures 4 and 5 contain two chords, including the remote C minor and B major, which contributes to the overall chromatic harmony character. The pedal point notes are played as arpeggio patterns in bassoon and contrabass. Another Richard Straussian or Wagnerian feature is the primary melody played in imitative phrases by brass, from the low trombones to the high trumpets at the end. As secondary elements we have the 16th note runs in the strings and the harmony background for pairs of flutes, oboes and clarinets. Path 4 will demonstrate another option that is based on the redundant occurrence of the target chord, while using compound Riemannian transformations only. As the tonet diagram shows, we approach the alternative D major triad at the top with a set of PR and PL transformations. The chromatic medians keep moving in the northeast direction until we reach the F sharp major triad. The remote triad F sharp major, or equivalently, G flat major in second inversion position requires modification of the bass part. Note the exclusive use of compound transformations and chromatic medians. Two times PR followed by PL, the latter when moving from G flat major to D major. This is a case of Schillinger symmetric system root cycles, twice a negative R minus 3I and then closing with roots descending by four semitones. <laughs> The instrumental form is a leggero, 120 beats per minute setting for two woodwind players and pizzicato strings in 4-4. The harmony contains one chord per measure, the pedal point is in the bass. The melody is played in octave doubling between piccolo and first violins, later with added clarinet. As secondary element we have the plucked arpeggio chords in the middle string section parts. The redundancy property is used once again in path 5, but I designed the path in such a way that we obtain a positive compound closing cadence. What we see in the tonettes diagram is that we turn left just before reaching the destination chord D. Still we use compound Riemannian transformations only, but this time the target approach is through the B major triad. This C flat major triad in first inversion position yields a different pedal point modification in the bass. The sequence of compound transformations is now PR, PL and PR, a zigzag pattern in the triad tonettes. Due to the chromatic medians, the symmetric system root cycles are ascending minor third, descending by four semitones and another ascending three semitones. 
you will see this marked in the audio example, since it yields a compound positive closing cadence, with the dominant equivalent C flat major triad closing into G major via the real dominant triad D. The instrumental form for path 5 is a short Largo Espressivo Orchestral Tutti in 3-4 time signature with one chord per measure. The pedal point is in the contrabass and in the lower notes of the bassoon and cello arpeggio patterns. The primary element is the unisono melody for woodwinds, percussion and high strings, starting in 16th notes and accelerating towards the apex climax at the end. The secondary elements are the 16th note arpeggios in the bassoon and cellos and the wide range harmony setting for brass group. The triad tonettes leaves room for creativity. One option is to look at the further redundancy in the diagram. Here I show an option for path number 6, that takes the triad D major in the lower left corner as the target chord. The overall direction of chord movement is southwest, and that gives us the opportunity to design a chord progression with either more positive diatonic root cycles as we move west in the subdominant direction or more positive symmetric system cycles, with roots descending by three semitones in the diagonal direction. I leave the design of such a path as an exercise for your imagination. In summary, what you've seen in this tutorial is the application of Riemannian transformations in the triad tonettes to a dominant pedal point chord progression framework. Alternative paths from source to destination triad were demonstrated using simple and compound transformations with chromatic medians. Some of these alternatives use the redundancy property in the tonettes, and all were interpreted in terms of Schillinger, diatonic and symmetric system root cycles. The five parts were turned into short orchestral compositions using the instrumental form concept. In the next episode, the focus will be on third order Riemannian transformations with more application examples. If you found this tutorial helpful, give it a like. In case you have not done so yet, please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to share this video. In case you would like to support my online music education efforts, there is a link to a PayPal donation button in the description below. On the website there is more relevant content for musicians, such as a set of ebooks in the webshop. See you next time and for now, take care and thanks for watching.